The zoom versus prime lens debate is as old as filmmaking itself. But when we start to consider cinema glass, the differences between cine zooms and cine primes are magnified. Today, we're talking about the age-old debate of cine zoom lenses versus cine prime lenses, and particularly how they impact wildlife and documentary cinematography. Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Tom Park, and I'm an underwater and wildlife cinematographer. Throughout this series, we're discussing the world of filmmaking and cinematography, where I'll teach you some of the things that I've learned over the last decade working in the film industry as an underwater and wildlife cinematographer. If you're interested in that sort of thing, subscribe and let me know down below what you film and what your go-to lens is, if it's a prime or a zoom. Choosing the right lens is a bit like selecting the perfect tool for the job. And in wildlife cinematography, it's a decision that can make or break your shots. Starting off with cine prime lenses, such as this Sigma 14mm T2 that I have here, these lenses are celebrated for their optical excellence. With a fixed focus length, they produce images with remarkable clarity and sharpness. These lenses also commonly have wider irises or apertures, offering better low light performance and often have wider focal range options, such as this 14mm T2. They shine in scenarios such as interviews and high budget movies, where sharpness and optical performance are of sole importance, and where film crews have the ability and the time to retake their shots. These cine primes are often sold and often used in sets of five or more lenses, covering a focal range usually somewhere between 24 to 135 millimeters. And while cinema lenses are designed with efficient lens changes in mind, with features like having identical barrels and gear placements, they shine in the world of Hollywood, where filming is conducted one shot at a time. Using these lenses in the field for documentary work, where we are following a set of characters, or where nature or wildlife is directing the scene, we find ourselves constantly having to change lenses to keep up with the action, rather than being able to stay one step ahead of the action and focusing all of our energy on positioning and composition. Also, these lenses are incredibly heavy, this 14mm, for instance, is over 1.5 kilos. And in the world of documentaries and natural history, where majority of our gear is transported on our backs, carrying an extra 10 kilo in lenses around all day adds up really, really quickly. I do have a few cine primes that I keep around for moments, such as interviews, or where I need unique shots, such as ultra wide angles, or I need to film in low light. But generally speaking, cine primes are usually far more hassle than they're worth when we're not able to direct the shot and the optical benefits are quickly overridden by the impracticalities and the reality that these lenses will result in you missing the shot entirely or capturing poor compositions as you're far too busy changing lenses to try and keep up with the action. This is where cine zooms come in, such as the widely used Sigma 18-35 T2 and the 50-100 T2 set up on my red behind me. These lenses are celebrated for their adaptability and with these two lenses I can seamlessly navigate through almost the entire prime lens lineup and cover a significant spectrum of different focal lengths. These are still very big ticket lenses, and while they aren't quite as sharp as the prime lens lineup, they are renowned for their clinical sharpness, and they maintain a constant aperture of T2 throughout, which is extremely impressive. In the realm of documentary and wildlife cinematography, where we aren't shooting off storyboards and we are very much following a set of characters, or are filming wildlife who never listen to my direction. This flexibility is incredibly beneficial as it enables us to effortlessly pivot from wide shots to intimate close-ups without having to change lens every few shots. It allows us to adapt our cinematography to the moment at hand and allows us to follow the action as it unfolds rather than changing lenses to keep up with it. The world of documentary and wildlife cinematography is for a large part unpredictable. As filmmakers, it's our job to position ourselves in a manner that we are able to capture the moments as they unfold, rather than in the world of Hollywood where we can direct the action shot by shot. Cine zoom lenses allow us to capture swift, unscripted moments far easier than prime lenses, where we would have to change lenses every few shots and every time something unexpected happened, and obviously result in missing half of the shots. In the world of documentary and wildlife filmmaking, it's almost a given that cine zooms are the best tool for the job. BBC, Nat Geo, and almost all high budget docos shoot mostly on cine zoom lenses. And it may surprise you to know that even a large part of Hollywood, including Game of Thrones, was shot using cine zoom lenses. 
as they keep sets moving far quicker, allowing DPs to capture different shots in the same take. Now, I'm definitely not trying to say that prime lenses don't have their place, as I do keep a couple of cine primes around for those specialist moments where I need low light or a particular focal length that my zooms don't offer. But for the most part, a set of cine zooms are far better suited to the unpredictable nature of wildlife and documentary filmmaking. All right, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.